Hey everybody, welcome to the Pine Cottage. My name is Nicole, and today we're gonna do a little bit of a tour of our camper. We just got home late last night, and we are unpacking, and I just thought now is a good time to show you the camper because nobody's coming in and out, and it's half empty. There's still stuff everywhere, but I can kind of show you what we lived in in the last 10 days. This behind where I was sitting is the kitchen area, and I usually have um, like shelves set up on the counter there, and we have a toaster oven, and then we have our sink and we have a couple storage drawers there. This bed here is where my daughter sleeps. Here on this counter is a bunch of stuff that I have to take out, but um, it's where I set up shelves for our little pantry area. And then you see my tea kettle because I can't live without my tea. I have a little plant and that's our toaster oven there. But this counter serves us nicely for pantry and just an empty place to put stuff. And there are drawers and doors under there. And our floor is covered right now with stuff, but it's a nice, a nice little floor. And then down here underneath the kitchen area is a refrigerator. Looking from this side from my daughter's bed, um, that's the little table where I was sitting at the beginning of this video. And that turns into a bed and is where my son sleeps. And there's another little counter there with some storage. And then that bed over there is where my husband and I sleep. So I'm just going to show you some of the things that I was working on while we were away. I did manage to pack everything in my backpack except for some extra yarn. I couldn't help myself. I did bring some extra yarn with me in this packing cube and I put it under this bench. Um, there's some storage under there so I just stuck it under there and then everything that I brought with me in the car fit in here. I brought with me some leftover scraps so that I could work on my granny stripe blanket. I brought my socks that I was working on and I actually did not even cast on the second sock for my daughter. I'll be doing that in the next couple weeks here so I did not do that. And then I brought my squares and some extra minis to work on some squares. That's what I kept in here in the camper. And then what I brought with me in the car was the January sock that I'm working on and I'm almost done. I got to the toe and I'm doing the toe decreases now. And so I am almost finished with this sock. And this is in Dark Lake Fibers BFL sock base in the Blackberry colorway. And she just posted on Instagram that she re just restocked this colorway. So if you're interested in it, you can find her link below. And if you did not watch my last video, um, you will have the opportunity to have a skein of her BFL sock base sent to you. Um, in the color great. So if you're interested in that go watch the previous episode and I will announce who will be receiving that skein of yarn in the next video at the end of May. So that's the sock that I worked on most of the time when I was away and then I um, worked a lot on my Battenberg blanket. I've been just kind of piecing it together and holding it with some light bulb stitch markers. So these pieces are not sewn on, but I just wanted an idea of how it was going to look. So I have, you know, an idea of where I want things to go, but it also helps me to know how many of the neutral squares I need to make so that I have a square or a rectangle. So that's kind of how I'm doing things right now. And I really like how it's all coming together. I'm trying to bring my phone out here. One second. So I had a couple 
questions about the Battenberg blanket and how I modified it. So in Sandra from Cherry Hearts pattern, she does very small granny squares. Um, I think she only does like four rounds. Um, I'm not exactly sure I'd have to look, but they're small. I am doing eight rounds. So you can tell by the number of holes there are in the X and that's how you can tell the number of rounds. So starting counting that middle hole, there's eight all the way to the corner. And so my squares are a little bit bigger. Um, so that's how I modified it. And, um, Full of Grace Stitches said, love seeing your work. What do you think of the modular join for the Battenberg blanket? I've been wanting to start one, but I was wondering if I could just do a standard join as you go instead. You can do whatever you want. If whatever you feel looks the best for your blanket, whatever you find easier, it's your blanket. You do what you want. That's the beauty of these fiber arts, you know, crochet and knitting. You can modify patterns to work for you. So. I chose the join, the modular join that Sandra uses because I couldn't remember how to join them. So I needed to look at the tutorial and so I just went with that. The next question I got was from Maz10676 and she asked, do you have an opinion about DPNs versus circular for sock patterns? I do really like the BFL purple yarn. I prefer DPNs for socks. Um, I have used large circular needles to do magic loop and I just don't like magic loop. I feel like pushing the stitches onto the other needle all the time is very fiddly and I just don't enjoy it. Some people love it and hate DPNs because they think having all of those double pointed needles is fiddly so it's really a personal preference I just prefer the DPNs also a lot of people feel like there's a lot of laddering that happens between each of the DPNs and I just pull the stitches tight when I'm going to the next needle and I don't have an issue however I did have an issue when I was using magic loop I had some laddering so I think it's whatever you are most comfortable with and sometimes it's whatever you learn on is the thing that you prefer because you've been doing it longer and you've you've been able to compensate for whatever laddering might occur because you're used to it. So I would say try both and see what you like better. Bondi from Knit and Quilt asked, do these podcasters reciprocate and subscribe to your podcast? Um, this is a general question. I subscribe to podcasters who I like, but they do not reciprocate. So just wondering how it all works. Um, this is a question that I got after I posted my um, 10 podcast that I'm loving right now video. And all I can say to that is subscribe to the podcast that you enjoy. Subscribe to the podcasts that you are looking forward to watching that give you the most information or entertainment or um, the personalities that you mesh with. I don't feel obligated to subscribe to podcasts that I don't enjoy. And I would not be offended if someone did not subscribe to me if they didn't enjoy my podcast. So just because I love those 10 podcasts that I talked about doesn't mean that I'm expecting them to subscribe to my channel because I might not be their cup of tea, but they are mine. I feel like if you want to do, and if you don't, don't. Uh, what else? Metaphor Yarns said, let me ask you a question. All your favorites are young. What would you say to watching a senior lady? I've been toying with the idea of a knitting podcast, but I'm 78. Too old to have a shot at being interesting? What do you think? No, you're never too old to be interesting. I think that if you love what you do and you want to share your passion with others, do it. I do not have an idea in my head of what a podcaster should be, whether it be age or gender or whatever, race. Like, if, if you're interesting to me, I'm going to watch you. So um, it doesn't matter what your age is. If you have something that about you that makes me want to come back again and again, I'm going to. And Debbie DeGainer says, where is your favorite place to shop for yarn? I do not have a favorite place. So I have my local yarn shop here in Ohio, um, but I do order a lot from Knit Picks for commercial yarns just because they are affordable. 
and also good quality, but I am not opposed to trying other commercial places. I enjoy finding different hand dyers on, you know, independent dyers on Instagram and ordering from them. I don't have a favorite. I don't have a go-to. If I'm looking to buy a sweater quantity of yarn at this point, my first place that I'll go is a commercial company because I can afford it to be very honest. But if I, if it's my birthday or Christmas, something like that, where I can spend a little bit more money, then I will find an independent dyer whose colors really speak to me and I will buy a sweater quantity from them that way. So I don't know if that answers your question, but speaking of where do I buy my yarn, I found a yarn shop when we were in South Carolina. So the local yarn shop down there, the Yarn Loft, was adorable. The shop owner's name is Lorraine, and she was so friendly, and it was a very tiny little shop on a quaint street. It had beautiful trees and flowers, and there was a juice shop next door, and a fruit bowl shop. People were sitting out. It was just lovely. It just made me want to own a yarn shop. <laughs> so I um, looked around and there were great projects hanging on the wall. She had a little table in the back where people could sit and knit and it was just very quaint and she was very sweet. Um, she only has been open for a year, maybe two. She's been living in the area for three years. She moved there from New York and her shop's been doing very well. So I was lucky enough to arrive on the day that she was doing a trunk show for a hand dye, independent hand dye, hand dyer from North Carolina. So I had a lovely visit and anytime you are in South Carolina, um, you should visit her. I did purchase two skeins that said beach to me. They were very beachy colorways. Lucky me, she was having a trunk show from the Fiber Studio yarns. And this is the colorway Charlotte. Um, they're a studio based in North Carolina. And this is the colorway Charlotte and it looked exactly like the beach to me. So this is the colorway. And it's got some brown tones in there, and some turquoise, very beautiful. So I purchased that skein. And then as I was looking around the shop, I also found a Madeline Tosh Twist Light. It's a super wash merino, 75% and 25% nylon. So a nice sock yarn. And this is also uh, kind of an ocean vibe. And so I purchased it. And this is in the colorway Bonaire. And then there were two skeins that had nothing to do with the beach or the ocean, but they were from Hedgehog Fibers. And I have never seen Hedgehog Fiber yarns in person. Um, it is a company based in Ireland. I've never been to Ireland. I've heard some wonderful things about their yarn, but I, I've only seen it online or in podcasts. So I wanted to get a couple of skeins of that because she was having a sale and these colorways spoke to me. Now you're going to laugh when you see them if you know me at all because I am very much into earth tones and not a whole lot of bright color but these I just I had to have them. I thought they would make great socks. So this skein is 90% merino wool, 10% nylon and this is in the colorway Bandit. And it's kind of like pastel, muted pastels, which I generally hate pastels. Hate, strong word, but it's true. And it has some black flecks in it. And then the other skein is also a 90% merino, 10% nylon, and this is in the colorway Shape Shifter. This is the brightest skein of yarn I've ever bought in my life. <laughs> and I just love it. I cannot wait. To knit this up into a pair of socks. It's so bright and something that I would never ever ever wear as a shirt. <laughs> Only socks. 
most of the time was spent with family and there were about 12 of us there together and we had a great time and now I'm going to finish cleaning up this camper and we're going to hose it down. It's got sand and salt everywhere. Um, I'm going to wash the inside and get it packed away for our next trip. I hope you're doing great and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.